Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions and today I am excited to introduce you to the latest addition to Grandstream's router lineup. Meet the GWN7062E. This device is ideal for home users, small offices and remote workers as well. Don't be surprised by the unit's small form factor. While it's sleek, it packs a huge punch as far as features are concerned. On the rear of the unit, you have three gigabit auto sensing ports, a mesh sync port to sync other 7062Es along with access points as well, a reset button, and a USB-C power port. Taking a look at the spec sheet, this device is a Wi-Fi 6 device powered by 802.11ax, supporting up to 3 gigabits per second Wi-Fi throughput. It's a dual band router, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, 2x2 multi-user MIMO in the 2.4 band, and 3x3 multi-user MIMO in the 5 gigahertz band. It does support up to four SSIDs. It does have built-in VPN support, including WireGuard, supports up to 128 concurrent wireless clients. It does have secure cloud provisioning through GDMS. However, it can also be managed by the GWN on-premise manager. The built-in controller only supports itself. So in other words, unlike other um, G Grandstream routers where it can support itself plus access points and switches, the GWN7062 built-in controller only supports itself. It does have powerful security features, including a guest network and a captive portal. It has a rich firewall and it supports meshing of other 76 62Es along with other Grandstream access points. Okay, let's take a look at the user interface. When you first sign into a Grandstream device, you're usually prompted to change your password, which I've already done, and then followed by the quick setup, which you see on the screen here. Now, if you're new to Grandstream, the password can be found on the bottom of the device. The username is admin by default for all devices, but the password is unique for each Grandstream device, and that's a security feature. Okay, let's go through the wizard. So you can see here, pick the country automatically. You could set your time zone. We're gonna arrow over. We're gonna to go to the internet settings, which is the second screen. You can see, remember I said it's auto sensing in the beginning of the video. It sensed that I plugged the WAN connection into the first port. It detected it as dynamic, which is correct. Now, if you have a different type of connection from your provider, then you can select the specific connection here from the dropdown and fill out the information accordingly. Let's move on. Here you can set your Wi-Fi information. You can name your SSID, select the band, the security mode, and the password. We're gonna leave everything set to default for now. And then the last option in this quick setup is whether or not you want automatic upgrade on. Now that means that the 7062E will automatically, if you enable this, will automatically upgrade the firmware without your intervention. I usually leave this set to off. I prefer to do it manually, but that's up to you. Let's move on. Here's your summary that is saving the configuration. And then you're presented with a QR code so that your wireless devices can easily scan the QR code and connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so looking at the overall user interface, now that we've gone through the quick setup, this is the basic tab. You can see we have a basic tab and an advanced tab here in the left menu. We're in the basic tab on the network map. In the network map screen, if you click on the internet, you'll get the information about your WAN connection. If you click on the device, you'll get the information about the router. It defaults to the Wi-Fi page. There's your router tab. There's your Wi-Fi tab. There's your port information. And then if you click on the client icon, you can see the clients that are currently connected to the device. Under traffic statistics, you can see client statistics by the day, by the week, by the month, or app statistics by the day, by the week, or by the month. The next tab on the left under the basic tab is QoS. Now by default, it's disabled. You can enable it and you can select uh, traffic optimization based on the auto mode. You can optimize gaming first, video first, or web first, or you could set your own upload and download speeds in megabits per second. Under home care, you have parental control, which is in beta. It says block internet access for unmanaged clients. You also have a security firewall, which I have the basic security defense enabled. 
Moving over to the cloud icon under the basic tab, you have the option to connect to GDMS networking, and then it gives you information about GDM manager, which is their on-premise manager. Okay, now before we move into the advanced mode, let's look over here to the right side of the screen. The first icon, these are, by the way, these are all shortcuts. So the first icon is a shortcut to add another router. In other words, you can add a second and a third 7062 router as mesh points, and then it walks you through the wizard. Now, from what I understand from the documentation, you can also add Grandstream Wi-Fi access points as mesh points as well. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. Under intelligent detection, the second shortcut, you can come to here and then under intelligent detection, you can scan the router and it'll check itself for connectivity problems and we'll go through the other tabs here later on in the video. Then this takes you back to the quick setup. This is showing you just the status that we're not connected to GDMS networking, which is Grandstream's cloud portal for managing devices. And then under admin, you could see we can select different languages that are available, reboot the device or log out. Okay, let's go over now to the advanced tab. Under advanced, we have an overview page where it's similar to the network map in the basic tab, except it gives you a little bit more detailed and information and some graphs. Under system info, you can see the software version. Now, 1.0.1.10 is the latest version. I did recently update that during a live stream this past weekend. Under internet settings, under internet, you can see the three ports here. There's your internet information. Under LAN settings, there's your LAN. Now, by default, the IP address for all Grandstream devices is 192.168.80.1, but you can customize that here. Under DHCP service, you have your DHCP settings. If you want this router to hand out DHCP addresses to clients that look to connect. And now again, if you change your LAN settings here, then you wanna make sure you update your DHCP service here. Okay, now triple play is something new. I've not seen this before. I'm not really too familiar with it. So I'm going to read directly from Grandstream's documentation. The triple play feature on the GWN 7062E and the 7062ET allows users to configure and optimize network settings for multiple services such as IPTV, VoIP, and internet. This function is essential for ISPs and users who need dedicated VLANs for different types of data traffic. The router provides multiple working modes to ensure efficient handling of IPTV streaming, voice communication, and regular internet usage. So let's go look at the working modes here briefly. We're not gonna spend a lot of time because again, like I said, I'm not too familiar with this, but by default, it's disabled. Under IPTV, you selecting your WAN port, you're gonna select your IPTV port, and then you're gonna select an ISP, it looks like. We'll just select Malaysia for now, and then it fills in all of the other information and you can say save that information. Then you could do the same thing for VoIP. If you wanna do it for both, I guess that's where the triple play comes in. Yep, IPTV and VoIP. And then I guess there's a custom feature where you can set your own information and your own VLANs and your own tags and things like that. So that's about all I can share with you at this point for triple play. Like I said, I've not seen this before, so I haven't had a chance really to play with it. Policy routes, you can add your policy routes here. Under Wi-Fi settings, you can change the default Wi-Fi here. You can also add additional Wi-Fi SSIDs, but remember up to four SSIDs is supported by this device. Looking at the general settings here, you can configure your channel width for your 2.4 and your five gig. You can set your channels right by now it's set to auto. And then you can see here your channel quality with one click optimization feature available. Then here under the mesh tab, you can add your other mesh routers. Now, again, remember we had the shortcut up here to get to this same screen. Then under clients, you can see the clients that are connected. Let's look at traffic management. Under traffic statistics, again, you have your app group statistics and your app traffic statistics for the day, for the week, and for the month. 
you have QoS here. Now it's a little bit more detailed than in under the basic tab. You can see here you can change your percentages based on the priority and the rewrite DSCP. And if you're not familiar with that, that's okay. By default, QoS is disabled. You have QoS for apps. So you can go in and you can select specific apps that you'd like to optimize the traffic for. And then under NAT, we have port forwarding which we don't have any in place right now. We have DDNS, and if we add, we can actually look and see it only supports two service providers at the time, no IP and Dyn DNS. So hopefully that list will expand in the future. It does support UPnP, which is off by default, and DMZ, which is also off by default. Let's look at the security tab. Under security, we have security firewall. So I have basic security defense and content security detection enabled. And then here are the statistics and you can see we have no issues at the current time. Under content control, you can do URL filtering, URL classification filtering. So you can come in here and you can choose to block inappropriate websites. For example, if I wanted to block all adult content, I could just select that and come over here and say block. And now all adult content will be blocked from this device and the network. Under app filtering, you got something similar here. You can come in and you can allow or disallow games, entertainment, apps, things like that, social apps. So again, some nice content control features built into the device. And then you can add your own block lists here. And I believe they're based on Mac addresses, yes. And you can select the Mac address from the list of connected clients, or you can add your own manually. Okay, looking at VPN going on, we're almost through. It does support all of the VPN protocols, just like the other devices in the router lineup. It has IPv6, which is disabled by default. And then under captive portal, you can set policies for your captive portal. You can create a splash page. You can see all your guests connected. You could even create vouchers for your guests if you so choose. Under maintenance, you can upgrade here. Now I did this this weekend and I had to do the upgrade manually. I did do detect new version and it told me that the current version is up to date. Now it even told me that when I was using a version prior to the latest. So I'm not sure what's going on there. The other thing I noticed too is on the Grandstream website, you can update using a firmware URL. So I copied the firmware URL from their website, but when I came back here, there was no field for me to input that information. So I'm uh, not sure if that's coming in a future update or not. Then you have the ability to back up and restore or do a factory reset. It does have built-in diagnostics. It has a log, a ping, trace route, a one-click debug. You have SSH remote access, and then line tracking. Under intelligent detection, like I said before, it will detect if the router is having any system or network connectivity issues, so we can do a quick detection. Under management platform connection status, now we're not connected to GDMS at the time, but what this detection test will do is ensure that the router is capable of successfully connecting to GDMS if we so choose. So it's going through and checking all the steps and all the criteria passed. So if we want to connect the 7062E to GDMS, we should not have a problem. Then under internet failure, this test actually diagnoses network failures for the WAN and for client devices as well. And then we have our mesh node connection, which we do not have any nodes connected. The router also supports TR-069 for ISPs who wish to manage and remotely connect to the device. And then under system, we have our basic settings. You can turn the LED status light on the front on or off or disabled within certain times. You could actually schedule a reboot schedule here. And then under access management, you can change your admin password, add users, set access control, etc. 
So there you go, that's a pretty in-depth first look at Grandstream's latest addition to its router lineup, the GWN 7062E. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If there's anything else you'd like to see regarding this device, again, leave that down below. I want to thank you all for watching and take care.